Well, hello everyone. Hello. What a what a fun opening uh, session here in the academy. You know, I, I've traveled a lot of places and I've experienced quite a few things in in my young life. I, I would imagine you equally have, is, uh, have done the, the very same. If I were to bring you up, you would probably lecture on all the impactful things you've experienced. But you know, uh, there are things in life that I'm very attracted to. There are some things that are like magnets that draw me, you know. You know, I've never seen anybody run to a cold stable. <laughs> never seen anybody. But you go, you go light a bonfire up. You'll bring the whole crowd out, you know, and they'll come running to it because uh, of, of the excitement of fire and passion and heat. And when I, when I ran into one life, it, it wasn't a cold stable, but it was like a bonfire. And, and it just drew me, and I wanted to be near it. You can see it from a distance. You know how unbelievably it's lit up, and all of its achievements and the direction in which it's traveling. And so I wanted to be a part of that. I want to be a part of something exciting, something enthusiastic. I want to be a part of being around and exposed to tremendous people, you know, because without great people, you can't have a great product. And, and we've had, we have great people. And it starts with our founder, uh, Mr. Ken Parker, uh, just unbelievably one of the most impressive people I've ever gotten to meet over all of my travels. So I can authenticate this incredible experience and venture, uh, venture that I'm on uh, with, with One Life. But before I go any further, Scott, I've got to deal with something real quick. Yes, sir. I can't go any further. Old, old Don sitting over here. I heard him earlier. He didn't think I heard him. And I'm sitting right in front of him. Old Dunn said, I bet I can tackle him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said, buddy. So, I, Scott, tell what we need to do, buddy. Right out there, like grass. That's a nice piece of grass out there, isn't it? That's right. A nice piece of grass. We, we can do it, Don. Not, not, but, 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 so I want to make sure his insurance is taken care of. Him. <laughs> We, we can, <laughs> Don, you know, Don, see, you, I've got a lot of good buddies, all done. You know, you saw old big old Kevin, didn't you? You see, I wasn't gonna hit you by myself. We were gonna get old Kevin to lead the way, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. But Don, I, I tell you, um, uh, it, it was a, a joy to play professional sports, and I'm gonna get to some of those things in just my 25 minutes or so with you. But I want to tell you a quick story. I remember being asked to go and uh, encourage a, a really talented, very talented athlete. He was a running back, much like myself. He was a high schooler, okay? And, but he had a humility issue, okay? I, I believe in being humble. I believe in humility. I think the more doors are open to you. I really do. And uh, if you're good enough, you know, you don't have to pat yourself on the back. Folks will recognize it. Right. You know, they'll pat you on the back. They'll say it all for you. But I go visit this young fella. Oh, he's talented. Mm -mm. And they told me to go to his football game and say to Coach, oh, come see him. But there, we really need you to get in his ear. He's got a great future. He's going to be an unbelievable uh, athlete. going to go to one of these major university campuses and just do it up. He's unbelievable. He's got an arrogant problem. Just, just cocky. And you can't tell him anything. He thinks he's better than everybody. Oh, you ought to hear him just braggadocious. Just, and so I, they sent me to him. And I, they said, come watch him play after this. You can meet him in the locker room, get a chance to talk with him. We'd just like for you to get in his ear just a little bit. Well, they told the young fellow that I was coming. You know, it, they, he knew my background and all those things. And, and so uh, and that was all I was told is that he was, gonna, he was told about me. Sure enough, I go to his ball game. Oh, he lit him up. 300 yards rushing the ball. Oh, you ought to see him prancing all over the field. And sure enough, when the game was over, I met him in the locker room, Adam. I came down, and boy, you could hear him in there talking. Oh, he just, he's just going at it. And he's just talking about all his achievements and all of his accomplishments. And then he saw me. And the coach said, I want you to go introduce you to Mr. Mr. Moore. And, uh, and, and so the kid said, what's his name? Um, and he said his name is Derek Moore. And the kid said, well, I call him Derek. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Sure enough, he comes over to me. I introduce myself and say, I'm Derek Moore. And I was, I was asked to come and just hang out. I wanted to meet you and get you. And congratulations on an unbelievable game. Just, just unbelievable. And uh, he says, well, Derek, you know, <laughs> 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 ah. 
so I'm going to play the game with him, and I just let him go ahead and go where he wanted to go. And, and he said, um, you saw the game? I said, oh, absolutely. You, I said, man, you were amazing. He said, I know. <laughs> Ow. Wow. He said, he said, um, he said, I know you were impressed, right? That's what he said to me. And I stopped for a moment, and I did a, a 180 almost. So let me go grab something, and I'll, I'll, turn, I'll be back. And I looked at him, and I said, young man, you know, you, you are very talented. You're very fast. You, you're very athletic. And I commend you. I said, but, I said, if you want me to answer your question, am I impressed? I said, I'll answer it this way. I'll say this. Uh, I'm not easily impressed. I said, I've, I've played a little bit myself. I've made a couple of those runs. I said, but I played with a guy by the name of Barry Sanders. I said, once you see him, you ain't impressed with nobody else. <laughs> and so he said, you played with Barry Sanders? I said, absolutely. And he said, Mr. Moore? <laughs> we went on to be bosom pals. <laughs> you know, I, I say that to say, you know, it, it's important to retain a sense of humility in all that we do. And the thing I love about this company is that there are humble people that work here. Uh, they are uh, incredibly accomplished individuals, folks of incredible integrity, uh, great values. I wanted to be associated with that. I, I don't like to sleep at night with one eye open. I, I like to close both of them. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, tremendous communicators. You know, people who say uh, what they mean and they mean what they say are the kinds of people that I wanted to plug into. Because, uh, you know, I'm 47, I'm getting too old for games. Y'all with that? Yes, you know, I'm just too old for them. I don't, I don't play games. I like to tell me what the deal is, what are my expectations, what's my role, what am I supposed to do, and, and, and let's work in that capacity. I, you know, those are the kinds of people that we have here at One Life. And our executive team from our founder and owner all the way down to everyone uh, within the infrastructure of this organization. And before I accept any offers, any positions to work with anyone, I'm going to do a thorough investigation on the kind of people I'm working with. That's just as simple as that. Uh, because I, I value that tremendously. I do. I'll make some money. I'll make some money. But I value building relationships, learning from people who've done it, you know, allowing that to be a part of my maturation and growth so that the kind of success they've experienced, I can experience. And I can pass that on uh, to others. So Mr. Young running back, um, I hope he's still humble. I don't quite know where he is. Didn't quite make it to that NFL. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> well, I'll say these, this, this couple of things for you. You know, um, I got a good call from my good friend Jeff Collins uh, with uh, Mississippi State Bulldogs. He's the uh, defensive coordinator uh, with, the, uh, with the program uh, here, in, here in Starkville. And I talked with Jeff Sunday after the big win against... Uh, um, who did we beat? A and &M. &M. I don't even forget him when we whip him. <laughs> I don't remember. But we, Jeff, I said, Coach, I said, congratulations uh, on, on an unbelievable win. And all we, we talked about it. And, and the thing he ended with, which is what I'm going to start with and finish with in my time with you, uh, is Jeff said this. He's a defensive coordinator for, for, our, for, for, um, for Mississippi State. And just a, a talented, gifted, smart man. You know, and, and runs those complex schemes. You know, they call that defense cycle. Over there, Jeff gave me the story behind the psycho defense. And uh, just some unbelievable behind the behind the scene things that you get as you get to know people, and uh, which is just so incredible. That's in any industry. Uh, and Jeff ended the conversation by saying, he said, you know, Derek, uh, we won that game. It was a big win. He said, but we got a ways to go. He said, it's not going to be easy. <laughs> That's less than 24 hours after beating 
A and uh, uh, A and M, he's going on to the next sale. Are y'all with that? He's just going on to the next one, and he was getting ready for an aggressive staff meeting, and he said it's not going to be easy, and it's not. I don't know about you, but have you ever heard of the SEC West? Mm -hmm. Oh, I always say good luck over there. You know, I tell you what, it's not easy over there, you know. And and Jeff captured that for me, and I wanted to sort of put together a little bit of my own uh, connotations of it's not easy. And, you know, life isn't easy. Is it? Nope. Huh. At least mine hasn't been. It just isn't. But, you know, it can be worth it. How about that? It can be worth it. May not be easy, but it can be worth it. And, you know, I don't know if I necessarily want it to be easy. I like a little sweat on my brow. Know about you all. I do. I like to see my heart race a little bit, Adam. I get a little competitive. I'm a competitive guy. I used to walk through that tunnel getting ready to go into a stadium of 90,000 people in some venues, and the anticipation is incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And so I'm getting ready to go and do my thing. This is my stage. This is my niche. This is what I'm trained to do. And when I'm getting ready to do it, that's an anticipation. I don't know if you have that anticipation when you go to a door. But if you don't, you ought to get it. I'm telling you, it's exciting. You're getting ready to do something on behalf of someone that's extraordinary. And both are going to profit from it. That's what's exciting about it. Well, it's amazing. I've discovered that there are three places I concluded that it wasn't going to be easy. I can tell you the three. The first was when I decided to get married. It ain't going to be easy. I don't know if you know anything about that. But it ain't easy. I'm sorry. I've been married for 21 years. And me and mama, <laughs> we've had some moments. I don't know which couple uh, that has it. Uh, but it's worth it. How about that? It's, it's, it, it, listen, it's not easy, but it's worth it. And, 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 and I'm not suggesting anything here this afternoon, but what I'm telling you is a hardcore reality, is that, you know, I, I've enjoyed starting that relationship and finding out what I'm made of. Because if anybody that can define and really help me understand what I'm made of is my wife. <laughs> I'm telling you about that tall. <laughs> That's all she is. You know, and she can just look at me a certain way and, whoa, yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, man, I know the look. I'm telling you. And it's amazing. And it's worth it, though. You know why? Because I get to partner in life with someone that knows me intimately, knows everything there is to know about me. I've entrusted all of my confidentiality and all of my person individual. She pays all my bills. If she, if she, if she decided not to pay the bill, we'd be in trouble. Buddy. I'm just, I don't have a clue on what the light bill's supposed to cost, who's supposed to pay for the dad gum insurance. I don't even know if she's stealing from me. I have no idea. Not none. All I know is that every month there's a roof over my head. I got a little food in my belly. And every now and then she gives me a $20 bill and say, you don't spend that too much in everywhere. Now you take care of that. You know what she does. That's what happens in the Moore house. You know. But, you know, and so you say, man, that's not easy. And I learned a secret about it is that in a relationship, in a partnership, one of the things I've, I've learned, you know, is that irregardless of our differences even, our struggles, and sometimes you have those in personal experiences and personal relationships, but you have them in professional careers as well. And the thing that I learned that was important at a stage of my marriage, when I was eight years into my, to my marriage, I learned this, that no matter our differences, we're on the same team. That's right. I can't lose. Even when she wins the argument, the difference is I still win. <laughs> because I gotta go home with her. It's an incredible experience. So when I win, she wins. So we don't aim to win the disagreement. Because irregardless, I can surrender any time and still get the victory. Wow. <laughs> wow. How about that? Right. I, I believe that's applicable in business. I do. 
I, I'm on day one, I bought into One Life. I may have, if Scott or Scott, these are our, our top executives of our company, they have an issue or a challenge with me. There are no reservations in them calling me and bringing me into a meeting and saying, Derek, we need to have a discussion on some very particular things. Because I know they have my best stretching interest at heart. Now, I can get arrogant like the little high school running back did and think that I know it all and, and run off with my little football. <laughs> you know, or I can take constructive critique, right? And say, here's how I can improve. Here's how I can be better. If something's been identified, that's a weakness or a character flaw. He can look into my experiences. And because I know at the end of the day, he wants to help me be better. I know that. It's not going to be easy. And I think most of us think it's easy. It's not easy, but it's worth it. The second place is, is that I found out it wasn't going to be easy is with my children. And me and mama decided to have three children. Boy, fun, fun, fun. Anyway, that's another story. Now, 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 now we did. We decided to have children. And, and so uh, you go from the fun to the, to the, to the, you know, uh, you know and my, I have all teenagers now. One's in college, a freshman, two in, in, in high school, a senior daughter and a junior daughter, and they run me crazy. <laughs> Holy cow, man, you gotta be kidding me. My, my daughter just turned 18 years old. She's a pretty girl now. Oh, man. let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. I'm, I'm on my subject now, it ain't gonna be easy. This ain't easy stuff. I go to the daggum football game just recently, Friday night. My daughter's a cheerleader. She's a cheerleader on the team. I'm real good. I got a male intuition. I'm going to tell you what I got. <laughs> I got a male intuition. I'm sitting up in the bleachers. There I am. They have my two daughters. They're both on the cheerleading team. This stuff's not easy, man. But I done bought into the fact that it's not easy. I've accepted it. I've embraced it. It's what I've done. That's why I'm going to win. Because I'm not trying to run away from uh, something because it's difficult, it's challenging, and it's going to force me to work harder than what I want to work. But it's going to be worth it. This fella run down the sideline. <laughs> Big old 6'3", good looking fella. Throw him a ball 60 yards in the air, he jumps in the air and catches it. What? As it snatches it down, takes off and runs for the end zone. Scores a big touchdown. Oh, boy, are we cheering. Yeah, I'm fired up. Boy, that 83 is a dandy. We got a good in there. I'm fired up about him. Turns out, I go sit down and I watch him. I'm watching him. He comes to the sidelines. The cheerleaders are all just adjacent to him. <laughs> and he comes to the sidelines and I'm watching him. He didn't hit me at first. Then he I started. Wait a minute, that didn't quite look right. <laughs> I'm sitting there and he looks over at the cheerleaders and he does this. <laughs> and I'm looking, and then he catches me down. I look over at the cheerleaders, and I saw my daughter look at it, look over there at him. Uh huh. That's interesting. <laughs> I ain't paying any attention at all. When the ball game was over, I go down to the field, see my daughter like I always do, give her a big old hug, you know. And it turns out this fella come around, and he come up to me, and he just kind of looks at me, and I. But we say anything, I went to congratulate. I said, oh, man, what a fine touchdown. You went up and caught that ball and scored. Man, what, a, what an unbelievable athletic play it was. And he was just kind of shaking his head, yes, sir, yes, sir. And then he walks away from me, and he goes over to my door, and he puts his arm around her. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Son. <laughs> That's what he does. He puts his arm around her, and it's an amazing thing. He looks up, and then he walks off with her. And I'm just standing and looking. I said, I think they got me. <laughs> and sure enough, and he kind of leans off. Then his folks are up in the bleachers, and he wanted her to come take a picture with him. And sure enough, they took the pictures after the thing was over. I jump in my car. My daughter drives, so we went in separate cars. I went on home. I'm racing to get home. I might have broken the speed limit trying to get on to my wife. I run in the house. I said, did you know anything about this boy that catches a pass and, and, and he plays for heritage? And do you, has she ever said anything? To no, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea what it is. I said, oh, you wait till she gets home tonight. I'll be waiting on her. Sure enough, she gets home. I said, well, tell me about him. Who is this fella you, you let put your arm around you? 
She goes into it all her little, oh, he's just a friend, daddy. He's just, you know, he's just, I said, yeah, that's what they say. He's just a friend. That's what they all say, you know. And, and we get into this whole spiel about this boy. And so I said, well, you know, I'm not here to tell you you're 18 years old and we raised you well and all those kinds of things. And uh, what's his name? That's all I wanted to know. What's his name? She said, his name is Ed. I said, that's mighty fine. I said, at some point, you making sure your business, me and Ed can have a nice conversation. <laughs> and sometimes, you know. And so these girls, you know, they and it's not just that it's them with, with each other and it's them with their mom and it's them with us and it's and they've been raising them all the, and all of these things and they get older and they want their own independence and all those things. It's tough work. Is it not? Yes. It is tough work. It is not easy. It's not easy. It's hard stuff. Oh well, and the last one was my, my, my NFL career. Tough, tough stuff. One of the toughest things I've ever done is to play professional sports. I want to be an NFL football player, and I recognize that it's easy to say it. It's something else to become it. It certainly is. And so as I begin to learn more about it, I had to work on my skills. I had to develop those skills. I had to come to training sessions. I had to work at it and work at it and work at it because I wanted to be selected someday to be a part of that incredible league. And sure enough, it wasn't easy. I was cut twice. I said, well, I'm going to get up and go back again. What are you going to do? Released? Cut? I remember this one story, I'll tell you. I'm in San Francisco with the 49ers. Toughest training camp of my life. I'm a grown man. I'm probably, I think at that time I was 27, 27, 28 years old at the time. And my wife and I was in, we were in California, and it was just her and I. And I remember calling her, Alan, doing uh, breaks and practices, how difficult it was in San Francisco. And there was one very particular day that was extremely rigorous, extremely hard, not just physically, but mentally as well. And here I am, got a young wife I've got to provide for. We've been thinking about starting a family, all of those things, and I've got to figure out how to make this club. So I can start my career, I can begin to sustain some financial opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. And it was the hardest thing I've ever had to go through. Now, I remember calling her. I was sitting outside of the training area. Jerry Rice is there and Steve Young, and they're all walking by and all these things. And I found a nice corner, picked up the phone and called her and said, Stephanie, I, I just want to let you know how hard it's been. And she just listened. And at one moment, I broke down crying. It was that difficult. It was that difficult. And my wife, I love her. I have no words for it. She said, Derek, Derek. And she just, she says it like that. She's trying to, mm -hmm. you know, she, she said, I know it's difficult. She said, I, we never said it was going to be easy. She said, I want you to get up off that ground. So she told me. Go wipe your tears and go back to your job. Wow. You hear me? Listen, it wasn't a huggy, kissy, oh, baby, I'm just, you know. She said, get up off that ground, go wipe your tears, and go do your job. That's what she told me. And I didn't prepare for that, <laughs> to be completely honest with you. I didn't prepare for that. And I kind of stood up and said, wow, uh, I don't like it here with the 49ers. I can't go home. <laughs> you know, there's no sympathy nowhere. You know? And sure enough, I got up, went back to practice, had a great practice the rest of that day, got home uh, to her after practice was over, and, uh, and we sat and we talked about it, and, uh, and she said, uh, honey, I love you tremendously. You are a fantastic player. You're going to do, do fine. You're going to do extremely well. You truly are. And you know you have the entire support of our entire family behind you. We want you to know that. She said, so tomorrow... I want you to get back out there and go back to practice and go back to your job. Go back to your work. 
She said, because I have a mortgage to pay and I have car to pay. She said, were well, you talking about starting a family? She said, and she just went, she was a tough girl, man. She was a tough cookie. I'm waiting for another hug and I'm not getting it. You know? And sure enough, all these years, it's always made sense to me, though, of what uh, uh, she's meant to me and the entire family structure has meant to me. But my point is that it's not easy. I hope I've captured that in some context for you, but I want to close with just three things I want to leave you. Three things you have to know uh, 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 when it comes to making decisions and really being completely bought into uh, any endeavor opportunity. You have to, number one, you have to know what's attractive, okay? You have to know what's attractive. You have to know that. You have to know what's attractive. And you have to weigh everything on the scales and, just, and make those kinds of decisions and make it from all kinds of perspectives. Is it attractive enough that I'm going to pour my entire being into it so that I can yield the results that I'm seeking? Is it that attractive? I, I think the one life opportunity is an attractive opportunity. It is incredibly attractive. And I don't think I'm here uh, because of anything less than that. I think le nextly, you want to know um, uh, not only what's attractive, but you want to know what's attainable. You want to know what's attainable. What can you really do? How good can you really be? We're using all of our resources. Are we going through Alan Bose's classes and training and preparing us? Are we attending academies? Are we using all of our resources? Are we investigating all of our avenues? Is it really attainable to be able to do what Kevin said and talked about his production numbers? Can I do that? Can I build my own team? Is it attainable? Has anybody ever done it? And I discovered in my pilgrimage of trying to be a pro player, I realized that others had done it. And an old coach told me a long time ago, he said, listen, jump up and touch the ceiling. And I jumped up and touched the ceiling. He says, now I know you can touch the ceiling. <laughs> he says, oh, when I actually touch the ceiling, I don't want anything less than that. How about that? Hey, you go out and have a $3,000 production week, I know you can do it. How about that? You touch the ceiling once, you touch it again. And the confidence I needed in my ventures was that I needed to experience success. And once I've experienced success, there's no limit to how successful I can become. And then lastly, you have to know what's asinine. <laughs> Isn't that something? You have to know what's asinine. There are just some things that just don't even make sense. I mean, that, listen, there are things that you hear, there are things that are out there that's not even worth your time. It just isn't. It's not even worth your time. Know the difference between the things that are attractive, attainable, and those things that are just asinine. You know? And the way you handle those asinine things is to weigh it against things that are not asinine. You know, things that, that you know can be attained, things that you know are attractive. But there are some things that are just asinine. It just is. That little high school kid, that's asinine. <laughs> and that, that's just asinine is what that is. Do you really think you, the, the, you know, the sun don't shine until you get up in the morning? You really do think that? It's it, it just incredible. But, and he had a humbling experience, of course. So I, I encourage you uh, today, those uh, who are here, all of you that are here, uh, what, a, what an incredible time uh, of the season uh, to be a part of the One Life family. You know, and Scotty mentioned it a moment ago, and he didn't even do it justice. I get the opportunity to be around Lee and Scott and Scotty and, and Alan and all of our executive team. We're meeting this morning with our internal office uh, here this morning doing some, some exercises that was absolutely incredible. And it's more than just business and work. It's family. You know, isn't that incredible? Yes. You know, that I can get an email from these guys. They can get one from me. They care about my experiences at home. They care about the things I battle with. They're very sensitive to things that, you know, uh, uh, that I need. They, they are. And, 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 and vice versa. And we go on the road and travel and do opportunity meetings, et cetera, et cetera. It's some of the greatest experiences we've ever had in our lives. They, they're just incredible. And I've had a lot of them in my travels. I don't think any of them uh, even uh, comes close to the time I get to share with these guys as I hang out with them, as I work with them, as I experience the One Life way. It really is an incredible, incredible opportunity. And I can tell you this, I believe in terms of making money, I've always said, you can make what you want to make. If you want to make it, how about that? But greater than that, it is the enjoyment. It is the, the happiness, it's the joy that comes with doing what you're doing. I've always said, don't do anything that, you know, you go to bed at night and you're miserable. You know, don't do anything of that magnitude. 
find ways to get fulfillment out of the careers that we're all invested in. And I promise you the results will be there over and over and over again, as, as Kevin said earlier. Hey, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your Thank you.